In this video, we're going to go ahead and work through to find the exact value for the cosine of 15 degrees. And we're going to do this two different ways. And each way is going to seemingly have a different answer. But then at the end of the video, I'll show you that actually the two expressions we get are indeed the same. All right, so this first method, let's go ahead and start by saying x equals 15 degrees, because that's the value for which we're trying to find a cosine. All right, so that means I can write a little equation here that says the cosine of twice x equals, but really 2 times 15 degrees is going to be 30, so we have the cosine of 30 degrees, which we know that value, that's a very standard value, the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, but I have this double angle identity here, this cosine of 2x. I would like to go ahead and exchange that for an equivalent expression. And that's going to be 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. Okay, and now I can set that equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and one more little substitution I want to make. I'm going to make a u substitution. I'm going to say u equals the cosine of x. Because right here we have the cosine of x. It's being squared. But so u right here will be the cosine of x, which x is 15 degrees. So when we solve for u, we'll be solving for the cosine of 15 degrees. So let's go ahead and make that exchange. It'll be 2u squared minus 1 equals the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so let's solve for u. We're going to start by adding 1 to both sides. So these 1s here will cancel. So I will have 2u squared equals the square root of 3 over 2 plus 1. And let's go ahead and get common denominators here. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 2 over 2. But ultimately, it'll give me 2u squared equals. And I'll have the square root of 3 plus 2 all over that common denominator of 2. And finally, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 1 half in an effort to get this u by itself. It's a u squared right now, but that's okay. So u squared equals, and it looks like, I'm just going to go ahead and switch the order of these two terms. So I'm going to say 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 4. All right. So this u squared, of course, we don't like the squared. So we're going to do the square root of both sides. So the square root and the perfect square will cancel, and I'll have just u, which remember, that's going to be the cosine of 15 degrees. And on this right side, I have my plus or minus. Don't want to forget about that guy. Okay, well, cosine of 15 degrees, well, 15 degrees resides in the first quadrant where cosine is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and take this positive portion and ignore the negative. So what I have here, I can break up into the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So I'll have, it looks like this right here, which we can do a final simplification and say it's a square root of, and then we have that two plus radical three, all over two. Okay, well, this doesn't seem like maybe a great value because we have a radical inside of a radical. But uh, let's go ahead and investigate another way we could do this. All right, here in this second method now, we're still looking for the cosine of 15 degrees. And this time we're going to use the difference identity for cosine, which says that when we have the cosine of two angles that we're subtracting here, we have this expansion. The cosine of A, which is that first angle, times the cosine of B, which is the second angle, plus the sine of A times the sine of B. So we need two values here, or two angles, that when you subtract them, it makes 15 degrees. But also, we need to know things about those angles, specifically the sine and cosine for those two angles. So let's go ahead and use the cosine of, and we'll say 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Because 45 and 30 are both angles that we know a lot about, and they also subtract to make 15 degrees. So, super. Okay, so the 45 degrees will function as our A, and the 30 degrees will function as our B. So let's go ahead and see what we have. So the cosine of A, so it'll be the cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 45 times the, uh, let's see, the sine of 30. 
Sorry about that. That's why we don't use pin in math, huh? Okay, so the cosine of 45 we know is the square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. We're going to add to that the sine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 30, which is 1 half. Okay, so simplifying this a bit, I noticed that the denominators are the same, 2 times 2, which is 4. So let's go ahead and look here. We have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And I'm saying that is the exact value for the cosine of 15 degrees. Well, if we look, let's go ahead and put side by side the two values that I had for the cosine of 15 degrees. So we said the cosine of 15 in the first case was the square root of 2 plus radical 3 over 2. And we also have in this example the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. So I'm saying that actually both of these work, and uh, I'll get a, grab a new piece of paper here, and I'll show you that these two expressions here, or these two ratios, are actually the same. Okay, so we have a fresh piece of paper here, and we have these two values that are exact values for the cosine of 15 degrees, but they don't really look alike. I mean, they're both fractions, sure, but this guy has a radical underneath a radical, and this guy, you know, the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2, okay. So let's go ahead and work through, and I'm going to show you that these actually are the same things. And so I'm going to do this like you verify a trigonometric identity. I'm going to manipulate this left side and make him look like the right side. So let's start by focusing on the denominators. I don't like that this one is 2 and this one is 4, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2 over 2, and that will kind of force this denominator to be a 4 as well. So I have 2 times, and then we have this radical expression over 4 equals. Okay, well what I can do this 2 right here is actually the square root of 4, so I'm going to rewrite it that way. But now I can go ahead and multiply by putting these two separate radicals under one radical together. So I'll have this right here. Okay. I'm still working down. Now let's go ahead and distribute. So I have 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. All that's under the radical and all that, of course, is over 4. Now, I'm going to break this up. So instead of having just the two terms, 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3, let's go ahead and break this up a little bit. And so I'm going to say the 8 is going to be a 6 plus 2, and then the 4 radical 3 is a 2 radical 3 plus 2 radical 3. So I still have the same exact values. I have just broken them up into a couple of uh, different terms. And now I'm going to group them differently. So I'm going to exchange the order of these middle two. I'm going to say 6 plus 2 times the square root of 3 plus 2 plus 2 times the square root of 3. All that's under that radical over 4. And I'm going to look at uh, each of these terms in pairs. Okay, and then I'm going to factor something out of each one. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a square root of 6. So that means I'm going to divide each of these terms by the square root of 6. When I do that, I'll have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. Okay, just to kind of show you that, square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is, well, 6. That's that guy. And the square root of 6 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 12, which reduces to 2 radical 3. Okay? And then the second guy here, let's go ahead and factor a square root of 2 out which that will leave me with the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6. And again, for the same reasons, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 makes this 2 here, and then the square root of 2 times the square root of 6 makes the square root of 12, which reduces once again to 2 radical 3. Okay, well, all of that is under the radical, and all of that is over 4. Okay, so it doesn't really look like we're really doing much here, but we actually are. So I have the square root of 6 plus 2 and the square root of 6 plus 2 right there, so I'm actually going to factor that out. And my leftovers are, in fact, the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. All right, and all that's under the radical, and all that's over 4. So this is actually a perfect square. I can rewrite this as the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 squared all over uh, or inside that radical, and then all over 4. 
So what happens now is the square root and the perfect square cancel. So I have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And what was I trying to get this left side to look like? Well, let's zoom back up here. Ah, uh, the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. So looking back down, we did exactly that. So we have now shown that those two seemingly disparate values for the cosine of 15 degrees are actually the same. It just depends on how you go about finding that exact value for the cosine of 15 as to which kind of form this answer will be in. I think maybe this one's a nicer one because so, you don't have embedded radicals, you know, like the radical inside of a radical. So there we go. There's that video for the cosine of 15 degrees. We found the exact value a couple of different ways, and we actually had two seemingly different values, but we went ahead and showed that really they were the same.